hello. Uh, this is my third attempt to record this video in a reasonable amount of time. So I'm not going to get too deep into any of these topics, but I wanted to share a little bit about what goes into um, putting together a performance for me because the performance is just like one to three hours on one day, but there's so much more that goes into it. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, how I prepped for my most recent show, which was last night, and then hopefully that's helpful to someone out there, and please feel free to reach out with questions or comments or suggestions. Um, I would love to talk more about any of these topics. So the first thing is booking. So last night I played at Rudy's Jazz Room. I've played there before, so it was pretty simple. I, I knew who to email and I knew how to ask for a date. Um, so that that was a while ago. You can book pretty far in advance. Um, I, I probably was two months in advance with this one, um, but I know uh, I know the people who book. So, um, but you can book, you know, three months out. The the earlier the better. You can look at a venue's calendar to see how far out they're booked and gauge um, how much lead time you might need. Anyway, you have to book the show, um, and then you have to, I, I had to put together a set list, and a new strategy I'm trying is basically to have like a template for a set list so that every time I'm performing, I'm not reinventing the wheel. Um, and so having a basic template where like, I can switch out a couple songs, but every time I'm gonna be presenting my strongest material and not have to like, start from scratch in planning. So, um, let's see. And then you have to have charts for the songs on your set list. And so I've spent the last couple of years gradually collecting charts. Um, and that involves a lot of listening. Like I'll write my own charts if I can't find a good one in a book. Um, but if that is not an option for any reason, you can always hire someone to help you. Um, and then, I had to hire a band and um, it's really important to me, obviously I want to work with good musicians, but I, um, there are a lot of good musicians. So I want to work with people who are kind and creative and um, just have an attitude that makes me feel safe creatively. Um, so I have to hire musicians and I think it's really important when you hire people to be very upfront about all the information you have, but specifically how much it pays and whether you will need rehearsals. And then phrasing it in a way that gives them the opportunity to say no, um, rather than framing it in a way that is like really pressuring them to say yes. I just think, um, yeah, that's better. Just give them a chance to say no. And um, so when you have your band then you have to promote the show, or I had to promote my show. I didn't do a great job with this one last night, full disclosure, but in general, I think as soon as you have the show booked, announce it. I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> okay, uh, as soon as you have the show booked, announce it, and then the earlier you get it out there, the less you have to scramble at the last minute to like clog up people's timelines or be texting all your friends like, please come out to my show. So um, ideally, you know, have a Facebook event, use videos and pictures from past performances to promote. Uh, if you have a rehearsal, get video and share that so that people will know what to expect or like what kind of performance you're gonna put on. Um, and yeah, personal invites go a long way. Um, so then it comes to the actual show, which is great and and is supposed to be fun. It's also nerve wracking, but um, it's a chance to connect with an audience. So make sure that you are like showing your personality and talking about um, things that are important to you so that they can connect not just with the music, but with you. Um, and get video if possible, because then you can use that to uh, promote future performances. And then after the show, uh, very first priority is to pay the band, and make sure that if you're not paying them like right afterward, that they that you tell them um, when they can expect to receive payment. 
Um, and then just thank everybody you can. Reach out to the band and say, thank you so much for doing this. Um, like send an email and follow up. Um, that's also a good opportunity to be really specific with positive feedback. Like, wow, I really appreciated the way you played this song or like the, the prep that you put into this, whatever. Um, reach out to people who came. Uh, thank your guests for coming to the show, especially anyone who, you know, made like a real effort to be there. Uh, and then reach out and thank the venue. I uh, try to do that as often as possible. And then a new habit that I have implemented in the last couple months is basically like quickly journaling about a performance afterward. And I do it in an app um, that I use to organize all my performances. But I write down what went well, what didn't go so well, and what I learned from the experience. And you know, it's like three to five minutes of thinking. Um, but I have found that really thinking about those three questions um, has helped me get more confident um, by like really hanging on to like what went well, what, did, what were the personal victories in this experience, and then being honest about where I could have made more effort. Um, so, you know, what I learned from this one was definitely like put in the time with promotion. You know, that was a good um, takeaway from this one for me. But it, it has absolutely affected um, the way I go about planning shows. It's so helpful to just, yeah, take stock of like what's going well and what could use improvement and then really be able to act on that the next time you have a show. So I hope that's helpful and please reach out if you have thoughts. Thank you.